my god welcome back to the league of the wings podcast it's starting to come down to the end round one of the playoffs is over and you'll never guess what happens clickbait <laughs> none of us make it there's no championships that got all canceled we all tied even yeah. alicia and trey came down to a wire you want to start with that yeah, sure. We'll start with your match. The so, stupidest match I've ever seen. You had a really good week 14. Um, go to the previous episode we'll, for our in-depth analysis of that. Uh, he was up like... I think 35. Five points. And then his whole team on Sunday just started so bad. Yeah. So he had Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf. Um, Russell Wilson had only one touchdown and one interception, like 121 passing yards. You got the win regardless. Washington is a tough defense, but it was, it, it's just been the same trend for a while with him. It's like his MVP performance is have been at an all-time low. You know, his wins aren't even looking that good. They don't even look much like wins anymore. And DK Metcalf, you'd expect more from him, but... Uh, I mean, still five catches. I don't think he had the opportunity to get more. The thing was that I was even thinking about uh, picking up Jalen Hurts just for like, just for like the hell of it. And he ended up having like 37 points, like with the three touchdowns. He had an like, amazing game. Yeah, amazing game. But like, like my entire t- team just like underperformed this week comparatively to last week. There was two players I I should have. C- kept in but like Matt Ryan he had a really good game against Tampa but like it's next Tampa so like why would I put that player in yeah he started he started off really well yeah it's his defense that cracked and then like David Montgomery had another amazing game he had like two touchdowns over 150 or 100 like 45 yards or something so mm-hmm. I could have put that player in but, but like, Brendan I- Ayuk and Travis Kelsey both did good yeah uh Travis Kelsey I can he's the most reliable player on my team he has been getting 20 plus points this entire season there's only a couple where he's underperformed I feel like the Brown and Ayuk pickup was really good he's on the uptrend Mm -hmm. even though that loss he had what what's his statistics he had uh nine catches and a touchdown 73 yards too so he had a really amazing game like Dallas but like Miles Sanders didn't do too good. Mike Davis. He was shut down by Arizona. Yeah, Mike Davis didn't do good. Miles Sanders actually started off pretty good, uh, at least in the first quarter or whatever. And I thought he would have like a solid game because he had like a one catch for 35 yards, and I was like, maybe he'll actually be like utilized. But then they just like stopped u- using him mm-hmm. after that. Yeah. Um, Robbie and Anderson did crap. Uh, Dolphins yeah, Green team. Bay defense completely destroyed Carolina. But at the same time, Carolina managed to do the same against Green Bay. It just so happened Green Bay was all around better team. So they took that dub. Um, yeah. So, yeah, terrible performance overall. You only mustered like 100 points. It was barely enough to win because my both of my overall points in the last two games was 200 61.57 and Brendan's Compton Crab Drops total points in the last two round or two games in this round is 261.24. So I beat him by 0. 0.3 points. And yeah. the, so the, the last the last players that were playing were Tyreek Hill and Alvin Kamara. Uh well on Sunday, I, mm-hmm. I should say. And they both had relatively, like, average to good games. Like, n- nothing crazy, but, like, good scoring in general. Like, kind of what you'd expect from them. Kind of their standard. And so, he, after at that point, like, the score, what he just said, was set for Monday. And Compton Grip Chip had one player, Eric Ebron. He needed one reception. He, he It could have been a reception that was for loss of... I don't know, like seven yards. No, not seven. Yeah, it was like six or seven. Six yeah. yards. It could have been a, a reception for a loss of six yards, but since we're a point per reception league, that would have been 0. 0.4 points. He would have gone over. But Eric Gabbard was taken out of the game very early, never came back, never got a chance at getting a reception, and therefore 
Caleb won by 0.33 points. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about this win. It's just it like a like I should have lost. Mm-hmm. Cause like Brendan's team was on a roll. Like he didn't have too many players that like for like headed off the nail where mm-hmm. it was just like an explosive game. I mean Aaron Jones had a really good game. He had like a touchdown and 145 yards for yeah. 24 points in our league, but not like any crazy amount, like 30 plus games by any of his players. It's just that my players underperformed so much that it made him have that much of a lead thanks to me for the second game. Mm-hmm. And then DeAndre, DeAndre Swift, even though he had a fumble, he also had two touchdowns for 67 yards off of four receptions and 15 yards. Rest Compton of- Grip Drip could have put in Justin Tucker, who I would have put in over Graham Gano of the Giants. Just just based off of the names, I would like put Tucker in because he's a veteran. Everyone knows him. Everyone knows he's a great. He got the AFC Pro Bowl starting position over Rodrigo Blankenship, which was a huge upset because supposedly Blankenship was leading the votes for a while, but then Tucker came in and took it. But anyways, yeah, he had two more points than Gano, and that that would have won it for Brendan. Or looking at some of the people on his bench, maybe. Uh, obviously, he could have put in any of his other tight ends over Eric Ebron. For example, Mark Andrews, he had actually a great game. Or Jared Cook, who didn't have a great game, but still, it was points. With Eric Ebron, he was – didn't he go out, like, the third quarter, too? Like, early in the third mm. quarter? I want to say early third quarter. I think it was before half. Okay. Because I, I wasn't really watching the game, so I don't know quite when he went out. The Bengals still held him for at least like a quarter and a half at least. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. they The Bengals were amazing the first half defensively. And, uh, you know, they managed to close out the win anyways, second half. So, yeah. So, it's going to be me and Titus going into the championship for this mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's look at mine. Um, I didn't have, like, the greatest game this week, I wouldn't say. Uh, it wasn't nowhere as good as last week, but, I, you know, I still managed to close it um, just because I had such a huge lead. So, last week I said I was playing in Kyler Murray. I was super confident about him, and I still was, but I was really bored Saturday night, and Aaron Rodgers was about to play. Josh Allen, who was on her team, just had an MVP performance. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put in my MVP candidate and watch him prime time have an MVP performance because I thought, you know, that would just be fun, alleviate my boredness. I was already, you know, winning pretty well, and I figured Aaron Rodgers won a choke, right? Yep. Well, Aaron Rodgers had a pretty good first half, uh, a passing and rushing touchdown, but then completely shut down second half and he was getting sacked a bunch it was just not the offense we're used to seeing from green bay um usually he's pretty well covered or he can at least make something happen in general but uh he, he couldn't find the answer he still managed to close it but yeah weird weird game from him it, i've been finding or been when he played against the eagles and i think a little bit against the Colts too it's where it's like he goes into the, or that team and him goes into this like little rut, the offense where they just like don't score for like at least like a quarter or two maybe. And then mm-hmm. just turn on the tables where it's like if a team is coming close, then they're able to like just turn on the tables for a drive, score some points to win. And that's what he did against the Panthers. He kind of did it against the Colts, but he did that against the Eagles. Well, I mean, he did kind of. He managed to bring it to overtime when it really shouldn't have gone to overtime at all. Yeah. But, like, he's just, like, he manages to, like, pull the team together. And I think that's what he's kind of set or he's known for, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, turning on the table is the last, like, couple drives. and But, like, stalling, like, maybe at towards the end of the second quarter or, like, middle of the third quarter, throughout the third quarter or whatever. But just, like, right. completely stalling. But he just stalled through the third and fourth her first players all did like super well actually not all of them austin eckler did not have a good game uh again in their win against vegas which was a really great game by the way but darren waller is her tight end and he had an amazing game and then 
that was Thursday. And so two days later on Saturday, Josh Allen was playing. Obviously, everyone knows what happened there. He dominated Denver. Not even close. And so at that point, I was feeling like, well, she has the upper hand this week. But I had such a big lead that I was like, you know what? She's just going to need all of her players at this point to do around the same like level. So come Sunday, Dalvin Cook did good, as expected. But Chris Godwin, Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup all did not great. And who was her defense? Oh, she had the Rams defense who lost to the Jets. Lucky for me, I guess. <laughs> I mean, she, she's a Jets fan and it was on her birthday. So I guess she got that win, not the overall playoff win, but she yeah. got the Jets win. And then also Jason Sanders only had one point uh, because he had two extra points and he missed a field goal. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Miami kicker uh, still won the game against New England. Too close for comfort. Yeah, I guess so. They are kind of expected to do a lot better. But but some of your players even pop, popped off as well. Like Calvin Ridley had a game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, had a game. I mean, even if they didn't, I probably would have still won. Like if yeah. they just, just did average. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Thankfully, I put in Stefan Diggs when Josh Allen popped off. So, you know, I kind of took in a lot, a little bit of that. Uh, he didn't get any touchdowns, which is kind of like his weakness, but he gets a, a lot of targets and he manages to catch a lot of them for a lot of yards. So, 11 catches for 147 yards for that game, which is nuts. Mm-hmm. And then Calvin Ridley had 10 catches for 163 yards, but also managed to get the touchdown that Stefan Dix couldn't get. So that, that was a good performance, both of them. Uh, I also doubled down with Green Bay, put Robert Tanyan in. He did get a touchdown uh, in the first half, like I said, but it didn't see much action after that. Johnson Taylor did good. Uh, basically just what he needed to do in his win against Houston. Nothing super crazy there. Josh Jacobs did good. Jonathan Taylor is like last four games. He's just been playing like lights out. Like RB1, baby. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Lockett has not been doing great. That entire no. offense hasn't been doing that great, to be honest. Yeah, I, yeah, that that was the same game as like when yeah. Russell and DK were slumping. When when the Seahawks do good, Lockett tends to do good at least. So yeah, I, I'll just have to keep a lookout for when he has a favorable matchup. I guess. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe since Washington defense was good enough, they would you know cover DK a lot, and t- Lockett would just get the easy catches, but. That's what it was um, looking like the fir- for the first half, at least, because he was getting mm-hmm. the majority of the catches. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Young Ho Ku and Blankenship both got 11 points, so I could have just done either of them. But, um, yeah, very similar stat line. Uh, both got a 50-plus, which Blankenship wasn't getting the opportunities of getting a 50-plus field goal. He did get one opportunity and missed, mm. uh, but he finally got his 50-plus against Houston, which was a game changer, I would actually say, at I that point. <laughs> I put in Steelers defense just because I figured no way that Cincinnati <laughs> without Joe Burrow would yeah. do that well against the Steelers defense. And um, I feel like you always have the worst of luck with that. Like when, when – I forget who it was. I think it was the Steelers or something. Oh, hold, hold on. Okay. Oh, I had to move. <laughs> <laughs> did you get kicked out yeah i thought my mom would be at work longer and i was using like her desk but i just went oh, okay. to my bed so it's whatever right. what was i talking about oh steelers defense yeah i feel like every time i say it's a sure win or like for steelers defense they manage to like underperform regardless of whether it's a win or a loss so yeah. i just feel like i should just put cold defense no matter what because even on their like eh games it manages to be somewhat better than Steelers so yeah because like the ones when the Steelers played the Cowboys which is like a Cowboys is like a <laughs> shitty like offense like they like mm-hmm. did terrible against them because they almost like lost to them as well yeah. so it's like it's weird that they're not performing like a number one defense amongst these like crappy offenses where they should be like scoring a lot of points and getting a lot of turnovers and stuff Despite Joe Burrow being one of the most stat- sacked quarterbacks in the league and Steelers being known for get- getting a lot of sacks and just tearing up offensive lines, 
Apparently, the Cincinnati offensive line stiffened up and only allowed two sacks. Uh, I think both from Watt, who is like the defensive player of the year candidate, mm-hmm. or like f- front runner. And then on the Colts' side, five sacks against oh. Houston and Deshaun Watson, who's a slipper and recoveries. Only 20 points allowed, but we did let up a lot of yards from Deshaun Watson regardless. But, you know, we'll ignore that stat. Yeah, DeForest Buckner actually was responsible for three of those sacks. Dang. Which is, like, I think his season high. Uh, it's just a lot of sacks in general in one game. And he didn't make the Pro Bowl for some reason. Yeah, I saw your Twitter – well, I saw you were tweeting about that, how, like, most of the Colts' defense got snubbed. And, like, I agree with you because, like, Colt, the Colts' defense is, like, top five or, like, the number one de- – like, uh, some would say the number one defense in the league. Mm-hmm. Or they're playing like it, but there's only one defensive player that actually made it to the Pro Bowl, which is uh, Leonard. Whereas, like, the Eagles' defense, where it's just, like, they're not – haven't been known for their <laughs> defense this year. They got like two defensive players in the Pro Bowl. So yeah. it's just like, I feel like most of the Colts players got snubbed big time. Yeah. So let's see. What players would I say? So definitely DeForest Buckner. Like, he, he has superior stats compared to some of those other people with his defensive uh, lineman position that got in. Like, he, he should be a starter, not just a Pro Bowler, but a starter in the Pro Bowl. George Odom, who's not a very well-known name mm-hmm. amongst the Colts, but he's a special teams specialist. He has the, he leads the league in special teams tackles and it's not by a slim amount. It's by a large margin. Mm. And so everyone says that he should have gone there. Rodrigo Blinkenship, of course, hot rod. He should have, he should have gone in over Tucker in my opinion. But also I would say Kenny Moore, who is probably the best slot cornerback in the game, but uh, people just took, you know, this more standard outside cornerbacks, in the Pro Bowl, uh, which is, you know, BS, but whatever. I just feel bad because, I don't know, I, I feel like you said it on the point. It's, I feel like the Colts defense is up and coming where you're seeing uh, not so many or lesser known players, I guess, on the Colts defense. And they're just, like, starting to make a name for themselves. So Yeah, but they don't have the league-wide names yet. Like, they've only – just been starting it like Kenny Moore with the insane one handed catch or Naheem Hines with you know his flips in the end zone twice in one game. You know, they they've only now been getting like that media attention, but I feel like it's still too soon for them to be like win a popularity contest as what yeah. a lot of people say the Pro Bowl is. So yeah. Whatever. Uh I I say that in the next like couple of years we're going to start seeing a lot of more of those Colts players getting in especially on the defensive end. Hopefully. Uh, it, that is as long as our defensive coordinator either stays because he's getting a lot of attention for, like, taking over a head coaching position and, like, a lot of the other teams that are without a head coach right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt Eberflus. Or even if he leaves, like, we can still, like, probably find a good enough defensive coordinator to take the reins and at least our – defense would still remain as productive. I, I, I am worried about what would happen next season without this defensive coordinator. But yeah. Let's finish the season first. Maybe he'll have a terrible performance in the playoffs, and then he'll stay. But I'm not going to wish that. That's kind of like with the Frank Wright situation uh, with the Eagles. Just oh, yeah. Like, he won the Super Bowl, and yeah. that, that solidified his position. Yeah. yeah. And then we lost him forever, and then our offense has sucked ever since then. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's and okay. Then, Jalen Hurts will lead the way. Yeah, I think Carson Wentz is. Uh, <laughs> he's right. gone. He's gone. Yeah. Dude. yeah, ain't no way he's coming back. I feel so bad, but we can discuss that <laughs> later on. And Philip Rivers has been so good. I don't think Carson Wentz is going to make it to the Colts. Yeah, I I don't see him on any team to be honest, because just have because of the cap space and just how bad he's been playing. It's just I really like Carson Wentz. <laughs> And it's just a shame to see him underperform because he has, like, so much talent and he shouldn't be playing that badly. I just don't know where the pinpoint his problem is because, like, you've seen Nick Foles, like, do so good at things, like, in this offensive scheme. And then you see Jalen Hurts playing up numbers. 
like why can't Carson Wentz do the same, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like weird. Oh yeah, and so Trey secured uh, fifth place in our oh, league. Yeah. Dieback Nation, two hundred forty-three points over half lesbian Thespians, one hundred ninety-five. Um, I think she still had in a, some injured people, like Julio Jones wasn't playing, so mm-hmm. I think that was that was the downfall there. And she kept Marquise Brown in, which actually ended up working in her favor because Allen Robinson and AJ Brown had not the greatest of games. So, so I guess she was right in putting him in. <laughs> against yeah. what we were saying last week but uh, i whatever. mean she could have at least put it in for julio jones i think i don't know what, oh yeah yeah because like he's been out for the last couple games yeah anyways let's go to our predictions we tied again by the way yeah i saw that i was like i was i woke i wasn't watching the thursday night game and i woke up and i was so shocked to see i was it the Chargers Raiders? Yeah, yeah, Chargers beat Raiders. Yeah, I was like so shocked that to see that the Chargers actually won that. Great game. Because like I I honestly didn't think that the Chargers could pull it off. It was just like I could see it happening, but I didn't realistically see it like actually like coming true. Yeah, there are some key goal line stops from the Chargers against Josh Jacobs. Uh so I don't know. Uh, is it Nick Bosa on the Chargers? Yeah. I guess leading that defense to, you know, make sure that they didn't go super ahead in that matchup. Yeah. And Derek Carr was out very early in the game. So that also changed the tides. Uh, Derek Hyde had a great drive down the field, that first drive. And then he probably could have scored a touchdown, but he hurt himself and it just ran out of bounds because I guess it hurt too much. He nearly fumbled the ball, in fact, but it fumbled out of bounds. And then he was out of the game ever since. And Mariota didn't do bad, but wasn't enough. That's all I can say there. Yeah, actually did really good for them. Surprisingly well. That might yeah, good, secure good. him maybe a starter spot in a different league or a different team, possibly. With this quarterback class, I feel like people would rather just draft, especially since he's probably one of the most paid backups in the league. So he probably will just stay in with the Raiders, but who knows. Yeah. Buffalo destroyed Denver Saturday, and then we both got that, and we both got Green Bay over Carolina, but I, I didn't expect Green Bay to struggle as much as they did. Aaron Rodgers said he wasn't expecting the type of coverage Carolina went with. He said it was very unique for the league. And so I guess it was a good mix-up on the Carolina secondary's part. However, they couldn't get it done on all sides. So I think it's one of those teams where they're just lacking on offense. You wouldn't expect that, too. Like, Bridgewater yeah. is not the greatest, but he has the weapons for it. I mean, McCaffrey yeah. is out, but Mike Davis has been a fine backup. Robbie Anderson is stellar. Yeah. And, uh, as well as the other wide receivers on the Panthers, but I think DJ Moore is one of them. He's been playing yeah. pretty decently, but yep. I just don't know why they've been struggling. Because like some of the games, they look like one of the best offensive it, offenses in the league, but then they put up performances like this. It's like questioning why or how they even like struggle that much. And when when I put the Davis and Ro- Anderson, and they flopped. It reminded me when you had both of those players, I think in the beginning of the season, and we played against each other and both of them flopped. Mm. So it was like kind of like similar situations where it's like if one of them flops, then both of them flop. I just thought it was yeah. funny and it was like a coincidence. Tennessee over Detroit, 46 to 25. Matthew Stafford playing when he was still basically hurt. He should have probably stayed out another week, but he basically begged his organization to let him play because he wanted to play through the pain. And for the first half, he was doing really good. Titans defense didn't seem like they had too much of an answer except for like one goal line stop where I don't know who it was, but someone fumbled. Uh, Titans just put on a show on offense as they typically do. Definitely a lot of momentum towards the end. Like uh, Detroit was kind of stifling it for the majority of it, but then Titans just kind of ran away with it and close it out really strongly. So just looking at the score, you wouldn't really expect that. You would just expect Titans have clear control the whole game, but Lions did have – did were making it close uh, for a majority of it. And you got the Colts versus Houston. 
Mm-hmm. Closer than I expected it would be, but it, I guess it's since um same 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 old same old. Yeah, I guess I would say is uh it's basically the same game from two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Colts get the upper hand pretty early on defense and offense, but then just Sean Watson clutches up. He's you know puts on an amazing show, all those yardage, and then at the goal line, there's a fumble or you know defense just does a huge play and you know Colts take the knee for the next three downs to close the game and that's how it goes it's that's uh crazy how similar both of those games were mm-hmm. what was the score do you remember what was the score of the first game um I think it was a bit closer 20 to 26 so yeah one point closer Dang. but yeah we improved by one point <laughs> <laughs> but Deshaun Watson just crazy yeah. Uh, I felt like our offense was playing really well. I just I don't know exactly where we struggled. It was just I think Watson. I don't know. I feel good. I feel like I feel like it was just does that's kind of how the game goes. Like you can be pretty good in all sides of the ball, but it can just come down to one player just like managing to keep it close regardless. Yeah. But you know we I feel like the defense always manages to close it out because that's just. It always comes down to the defense. And, mm-hmm. like, this is, like, Julian Blackman's interception against the Bengals to make sure he stopped Joe Burrow's final drive. And Julian Blackman punching the ball out from Marquise against the Green Bay in overtime. Darius Leonard did it, just did it against uh, – I forget what his name is, whatever Houston wide receiver it was. Um, two weeks before, it was – I don't know if it was DeForest Buckner or – Justin Houston, one of those guys pressuring Deshaun Watson to make sure he, they recovered the fumble since Deshaun Watson slipped up. There have just been so many different points where, you know, defense may not look good the whole game, but at least they can close it out. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. So Yeah, and that's why they say defense wins championships. And I feel like that's why the Colts have a really good chance of making it into the Super Bowl or at least – Oh, we're going to have so much fun against the Steelers. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, on both sides of the ball, like, defense is tough. But I feel like our offense is more yeah. prepared to take on a tough defense <laughs> than the Steelers are yeah. against a tough defense. Because Steelers were not looking good against the Buffalo Bills defense whatsoever. And then struggling against a poorly, like, two had <laughs> and one team, too. Like, struggling to put up 20. Hey, hey three ten and one now. Three yeah. ten and one. Yeah, three ten and one. But like, I as after the Washington game, that just completely exposed the Steelers. Cause like, I was saying it like after Washington, I'm like, Steelers aren't as good as their record. Like they shouldn't be eleven and zero, but they just like find out ways to lose, and it's just. Yeah. I'm fall- so happy that they're losing now. Yeah, they fall into so the three C. In the AFC, Bills overtook their position. Chiefs are obviously on top. And so there's a crazy little sequence that can happen this upcoming week. So if Colts beat the Steelers Mm. and Green Bay beats the Titans, both are pretty likely, I would say. Colts will leapfrog from the sixth seed, which they are right now, all the way to the third seed and overtake Steelers there. Dang, that's crazy. Steelers will get bumped to fourth. Titans will get bumped to sixth or seventh or whatever. Mm. Maybe a fifth. Who knows? That's crazy. Also, like, the Browns can actually, like, have a chance of winning. The oh, yeah, Browns have a great chance of winning the division, yeah. which was, like, when was the last time they've done that, actually? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it has it has to be at least over, like, 10-plus years, at least, because, like, they've been so bad for so long. I just – I want the Browns to win because, like, I, I just hate the Steelers that much. I actually want to look that up. Yeah, you can look it up. I'll start – talking about the other games uh atlanta couldn't close against the tampa bay they were doing so well first half it was a huge lead tom brady brought it back which you know we're not too surprised by but i feel like we're even more not surprised by the fact that atlanta blew that lead 31 27 tampa bay is now 8 5 but they look very exposable regardless if it was that close against atlanta um miami 8 5 beat new england it was still too close for comfort, but Tua had a pretty great game. Probably his best performance, despite finally getting an interception. Wasn't his fault, I would say. 
was more the receiver's fault for bobbling it, but whatever. Minnesota, we both thought would win against Chicago, both 6-7 at the time, but it was close. Minnesota couldn't close it. Chicago ended up beating them 33-27. Seattle, we both guessed would beat Washington, but it was way close, 20-15, to which, I mean, Washington has been looking better and better, and Seattle has been looking worse and worse, but you know, those trends have stopped at least for now. San Francisco lost to Dallas 41 to 33. What happened there? I, I didn't get to really see much of that. I didn't see much of that either. I think I I have no idea where the 49ers like <laughs> offense went, but like oh well, like it wasn't even like it was more of their defense, I guess. But like I don't even that or the Niners defense just couldn't stop the Dallas from going up the field and scoring. It was just like yeah, every opportunity. Ezekiel Elliott's replacement, I think, was the key <laughs> offensive guy. Like, I don't know his name, but apparently he was doing great. I think it's Tony Pollard. And like Amari Cooper didn't even do well either. That made me so like upset too. Your I, game against Dallas next week is going to be important. I just don't like – I don't want the Eagles to go into the playoffs because I want a better draft pick because they lost – and but I like I I also don't want the Cowboys to like go in, either. So that's like just so you have to beat them and hope Washington you know closes it out. So the only way that the Eagles are making it into the playoffs is the Giants lose out, Washington loses out, and if we win out, then we go to the playoffs, which it's is possible. very likely. It's only two games. Yeah. Rams lost the Jets. I don't even know what more to say there. Rams just look so bad. I they were looking really great the past yeah. couple of weeks and then completely faltered. I was, I was watching the score and I saw that the Jets were up 13-0. And I was like, oh, they're up to like an early start as like they usually do. And I was like, I didn't think of anything of it. And once the final scores were like starting to happen, I saw the Jets like actually like when i'm like what am i like seeing that correctly i won that one little side bet that we had going there i was yeah. so close yeah like that and then like the rams were the last team that i'll expect to lose yeah. against the jets as well which is especially because their defense is so good and like it's the jets offense that's worse like Jets defense actually isn't that bad i mean clearly against the rams they showed it it's just play calling and um offense both really bad but jets managed to do it arizona clutched it out against philadelphia yeah uh i'm not going to say too much because i already blabbered in previous video that i uploaded on them but i feel like like the the entire team played lights out i feel it's just the cardinals had the edge with their offense I feel like it's one of those games where it's momentum based, where it's solely based on whoever has the most momentum is going to win. And I feel like we could have, we should have won the game, except for the momentum switched when Arizona had that fake punt mm. towards the end of the game, I think, or I think it was around end of the third to maybe the start of the fourth, sometime around there. But, that switched their momentum to the Cardinals' favor. And even though they didn't score on that drive, it just completely, like, stalled the Eagles' defense and momentum as an entire team because we scored previously to that, like, previous before that drive, and all the momentum would have went on our side if we would have if we would have actually stopped them gotten the ball back. But it was a right. fourth and two. A fake punt, it got the fake punt, and then ran down the field, and yeah. Yeah, Hertz was playing great, but so was Kyler Murray. Um, people were saying that Kyler Murray's terrible performances from like the past two or three weeks were actually because he was playing on injury, but he was finally starting to look like himself mm -hmm. uh, in his last game, and so people were expecting that breakout, like I said he would have, but I didn't double down on simply because I playing from ahead anyways yeah if josh allen didn't have his breakout performance i don't think i would have put in aaron Rodgers just because i wanted that mvp battle i thought that'd be cool but yeah uh it didn't work out doesn't matter i won the yeah. whole thing anyways lost the battle won the war yeah. anyways uh you still won by like 60 points anyway yeah so those oklahoma quarterbacks yeah 
Very good. I, it's going to be exciting to see if Arizona can, you know, manage to close out this playoff run. Or not playoff run, but road to the playoff run. Um, they have they come a, down to a game against the Rams in Week 17. Yeah, they just have such a good team, especially their offense. Just, like, playing and thanks them. I mean, the Eagles' defense isn't stellar, but, like, the Eagles' defense, like, definitely held their own. They had, like, two mm-hmm. two turnovers. They were getting to Mary. They had a few sacks. It's just they were, act- they were like, pressuring him. But yeah. it's just, like, they're basically unstoppable. Yeah, if Cardinals build on their depth or, like, those very small holes that they have on their teams, they're going to be unstoppable one day. Yeah. I don't think it's this year they're going to make that huge playoff run or whatever, but next year – I can see it happening. Maybe two years from now, one of those two. Yeah. Um, Chiefs close game against New Orleans. Drew Brees wasn't looking himself, especially because he had just come back from fractured ribs. So maybe he shouldn't have been playing, but whatever. Yeah, it was just it was a tough game for Drew Brees, but I mean they still managed to keep it close. Yeah. Super Bowl preview as well, but you know Chiefs are the Chiefs. They they. Do what they do. That just shows you how dominant the Chiefs are. Like, if they can – I don't. I just feel like they just walk over anybody, especially if the Saints are one of the best teams in the NFC and they just – I feel like they just walked all over them, even though it was a closer game than what it feels. But yeah. that just makes me even more pissed off that they lost to Oakland. I feel like – I 100% <laughs> I feel like they did it on purpose just to, like, take off of the pressure of, like, an undefeated season. <laughs> No, they they looked so bad against Oakland that first time. Like it wasn't just a, like a loss. It was like, oh, wow, that was all they yeah. lost. Like yikes! People were saying like Chiefs still look like the Super Bowl team anymore. Yeah. It was stupid, especially because Steelers were you know making a name for themselves at the time. Yeah. How the tides have turned. Anyways, yeah. Cleveland, you know, boring game against the Giants, but you know, win is a win for them. They. Are looking great at this stretch of the season. Um, nine and I mean ten and four. Yeah, they could take this division, steal it from the Steelers. Yeah, if Juju just stops dancing on logos, maybe I, Steelers have a chance. After like Juju, like Juju is one of the most, or I personally one of the most hated like players now. After that, like his TikTok dances are so like freaking annoying, and he's starting to be like so cocky and stuff. He's, like, turning to Antonio Brown a little bit. I don't know what it's up with, like, the Steelers organization, but they're, like, <laughs> hockey players come out of that. But it's what's true. The... <laughs> like, it's so annoying. Like, you got Bell. You got, like, Roethlisberger. Not as much, a little bit. But – and then – well, with the Browns, if they would win the division, it would be the first time they won a division since 1989, which is insane. Wow. I did. I mean, Baker Mayfield has looked great. Yeah. And, you know, everyone was saying that they wouldn't be able to do it because of his terrible connection mm. or chemistry with Odell. Mm. But now that he's out of the equation, it seems like he's doing just fine. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe yeah. Odell is without a job. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> they might just, you know, trade for a different receiver. Who knows? But, uh, um, this is like the first season too since 2007 that they had a winning record as well. Mm-hmm. So like big improvements for the Browns. Yeah, I mean that defense is kind of scary as well. Like Miles Garrett. I don't really know any of the other like members on that defense. Like I don't think any of them are like, you know, star star players, but I guess as a, you know, as an organization, as a a unit, they play very good. Uh not that, you know, cl- Shutting down the Giants is a huge accomplishment, especially with Daniel Jones out. But yeah, but still, it's a win. They, they got the win. And yeah, they- Pittsburgh lost to Cincinnati by ten. Nearly had the ability to make a comeback, but yeah. just couldn't. They they were just so behind. Momentum yeah. was completely lost. Uh, I think their confidence is faltering. Like. It's just this is the point of the season where you need to look like an undefeated team. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you start out undefeated. This is like the last stretch is what you really need, mm-hmm. and that's kind of how the Colts have been looking. The Browns, even the Ravens, have started to look better and better. 
Yeah. Uh, like I, I'm honestly scared. Like Lamar Jackson might be powering on again. AFC right. looks like a very tough conference, and Steelers look so behind compared to all of them. Yeah. At this point in the season. This is the most important part of the season in December, and just because it's momentum building up into the playoffs and making that playoff run, and it's mm-hmm. building that confidence, and you should have your final, all your final pieces together. And that's the one thing that I gave props, give props for the Eagles as well. Because even though the lot, or at least to Doug Peterson, because since he's like joined the last four games, he's like, since like 2016, he's went three and one, three, three and one, four and oh, three and one, three and one. Or he's like, he's just above 500 in these last four games. And it's just, that's what you need to do. And that's why the Patriots as well have gotten into the playoffs and that playoff stretches because they could finish the season. Yeah. So, so before the Colts is um, bye week, they – well, actually, yeah, maybe after, but whatever. They, they're at 5-2 at some point, and that was, like, pretty impressive um, considering they came from a – they started off with a bad loss to the Jaguars, and then who, who was the other team they lost to? Maybe they lost to the Browns at that point. Yeah, I think it was the Browns. Cause I, remember... I think Browns were their second loss. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember I think you... it was. Because I remember you telling me that that was the only Browns like good win that came out of right. The... Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, since then they've had good wins, but yeah. Yeah. So Colts started five two, and defense were looking like the you know the stars of the team, and when being asked about it, like the defensive improvements, whether or not they're the best in the league, and I don't know which defensive player on the Colts said this, but they're like, well, yeah, we may be the best defense in the league right now, but no one's going to remember if we're the best defense in the league by week seven. Mm-hmm. They're going to remember if we're the best defense in the league by week 17 yeah. or by the time we someone wins the Super Bowl, you know? Yeah. That's all anyone remembers. It's how you close out mm-hmm. the season is all That's anyone true. will remember. And that it doesn't seem like the Steelers have that mentality. You know, it yeah. feels like, you know, they know they're in the playoffs already. They're kind of slowing down. But they're going to need that momentum for their playoff run. And it seems like yeah. they're not really – they don't really have it. Is that every – did we go over every Yeah, game? that's every game. Um, Let's look at our our matchup, man. <laughs> yeah. Week 16. Um, This is going to be interesting because depending on what happens this week between, like, actual NFL teams, mm-hmm. uh, whether or not they cl- – place their home field advantage or not mm-hmm. which i'm not sure is super likely between any team except the chiefs depending what happens there like week 17 might be the week where you know certain players are sat out mm-hmm. and uh you know we'll have to prepare for that if we have certain players of those teams but at least for week 16 no one's starting to do that yet my big highlight i guess is that colts are having to play pittsburgh and i have both of those defenses so i obviously have to put in the close defense against pittsburgh mm-hmm. um which looked sca- scarier beforehand but you know now that they've lost to the Bengals, i'm looking at this like this is actually probably what i should have been doing regardless yeah. regardless of my bias also mccaffrey is starting the week of practicing questionable again mm-hmm. like he keeps getting listed as questionable but by the time of the game he's listed as out so mm-hmm. I have him in the lineup right now, but you know, I wouldn't I'm I'm more more sure that he's not gonna end up playing than sure that he will. That's where I stand on that. He actually has like points in his favorite favorite where it's the past couple of weeks it's just like a goose egg. But I'm honestly like super scared to play you because I was I was feeling confident and like Brendan because like he's been playing good and he's like I I can like bite him like I can like take advantage of that because he's down to play but mm-hmm. like the pa- like you're on the upswing and I don't think you're going to come down from that upswing so I don't think I can take advantage of that um, mm-hmm. and my team's just been playing like absolutely garbage like Russell Wilson the past like second half of the season's just been playing absolutely garbage and i don't i i don't know what to do with that because i'm probably going to finagle my team a little bit maybe pick up a different qb possibly maybe i don't want to pick up too many players 
because I, I feel like that's been biting me in the butt recently. But I just want to, like, play with the players I do have because the reason why I feel like I almost lost to Brendan is because I, have like, was too much in my head of I need to, like, switch out these many players because to, like, have the edge. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do that as much, and I'm going to trust the players I do have because Antonio Gibson is coming back. And I'm pretty, he's listed as crushable. I'm pretty sure he's going to play. I'm not 100% sure on that. But if he comes back, David Montgomery, he's playing lights out. He's playing Jacksonville. So, oh, easy. so like, there's a couple places where I need to switch out. Um, right. Well, especially with the running backs, I'm probably going to have to switch that, switch a couple of those. Um, Jarvis Slandry, I'll probably put up, in place of Robbie Anderson, uh -huh. um, maybe the Dolphins defense for Bucks defense because Bucks are playing against like Detroit. Um, so I'm just going to switch around there, but I may make a big move within the QB position because mm. Russell Wilson is just not playing like his MVP self, like yeah. we said previously, because he's since week eight. Yeah, week eight was his biggest boom. Or not his biggest boom, but like last boom, he had 28 points in our league. But since mm -hmm. then, he's have had had uh 22 points or under in every single game, and one, two, three, four, four of those games were under 15 points. So he's just not that boom that I need him to be. Cause I feel like in order to beat you, I need my players to boom with those 30 plus point games to have any chance of beating you. So I can't yeah. settle for <laughs> average. Average points is not going to settle it to beat you. I need boom in every single player because McCaffrey's back. If McCaffrey's back, he's probably going to score like. I don't think he will be. Huh? I don't think he will be. I, I wouldn't be surprised if week 17 he would, but yeah. I don't think he will be this week. Yeah, but still. Because like Calvin Ridley's. Like, your team is just, like, heating up, I feel. Heating up. And that's scary. Yeah. So, I will say this, though, that uh, I feel like this week particularly is probably some of the worst, like, head-to-head -head matchups I've seen on my team. Um, Aaron Rodgers against Tennessee, that's no – that's no wash. I mo – I – I'm going with Aaron Rodgers over Kyler Murray this week because Kyler Murray is playing San Francisco, which I think is a tougher defense. But also, I want to see Green Bay destroy Tennessee. That way, you know, Colts can get a better seed in the playoffs mm. and uh, secure their chances. Um, and I just really like Aaron Rodgers, and I'll probably could put Kyler Murray in Week 17, but uh, mm. especially since – you know, Cardinals are going to really need these last two games, and I don't want a chance of, like, Aaron Rodgers, like, get, you know, getting benched for his, you know, final game, if it comes yeah. to that. I feel like Kyler Murray also finds himself in far more, like, tight situations, like, tight games where he, you know, ends up, like, popping off and getting a lot of yardage and stuff like this. And, you know, in these playoff scenarios, that's going to happen a lot, so. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. You need a close game. You can't have mm -hmm. outs and stuff. I'm honestly, yeah. like – really excited about this matchup even though like i'm not <laughs> confident about it i'm still like excited because like i feel we said this previously like even though i stumbled into the championships mm -hmm. by a lot just because like i beat brendan by like 0. 0.3 points and my record's like six and seven throughout this entire like like season or throughout this like entire fantasy but like i feel like all, like us two is like the most likely to be in this championship position just because of our knowledge so right. it's like I feel like we have like very similar knowledge about the NFL so it's like mm -hmm. it's going to be good nonetheless even though you may destroy me and I'm still I'm still <laughs> I, honestly really excited I don't think I'll destroy you at least not week 16 yes. because of matchups like I said because even if Christian McCaffrey's back he's playing Washington Mm -hmm. And we know how Washington defensive line is. I mean, it is McCaffrey as well. Yeah. But, I mean, if he's injured and coming back and, like, limited snaps and playing Washington, that would be very dangerous for me. So mm -hmm. I do have to be wary of, uh, you know, his uh, predicaments. Even if he's in, he might be limited snaps. Who knows? 
Then there's Josh Jacobs playing Miami. Tough defense. Keenan Allen against Denver is, I guess, fine. Stephon Diggs against New England. I mean, New England has, like, a couple of guys in the secondary, like, cornerbacks who have, like, the most interceptions and, like, some of the tightest coverage. Like, New England secondary is probably the thing that is getting them their wins at this point. Um, And so Stephon Diggs, especially since the Bills is a very spread out, you know, offense, like, they have a lot of weapons, like Mm – that might not be as favorable as I might think. Uh, Robert Tanya against Tennessee defense is not that great. Calvin Ridley against Kansas City, not that great. And then obviously Colts and Robert Blankenship against Pittsburgh. I mean, Pittsburgh has not been looking good, but they're still no joke. Like, I can't get too confident about that until the actual game. The only area that I see myself exceeding is the tight end position. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like that's my only chance to, like, make it close. But I guess <laughs> Bless you. Okay. Okay. But, um, but yeah, like, so the matchups, my match, like, for this week, like you said previously, my, my players opposing teams are less of what you're opposing. Like, it's – wait, I just got crossed off in my own head. But, like, wait, my players, their teams that they're playing are easier than what your players are playing. Because mm-hmm. like, they're deep. Like, what you said, you already went over that. But um, I just need to get ahead this week and have the same situation that I had with Brendan where I can have it close. But I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be exciting nonetheless. Yeah, speaking of Brendan, he's going to be playing for third place against Sofia Esposito Fries, the teams we beat. Um, I think this will also honestly be really close because, you know, Brendan, like, I don't think he's looked as good closing out the season, but, you know, he can always, like, pop off, like, you know, Kamara, Tyreek Hill, Terry McLaurin, Aaron Jones. Tom Brady's pretty consistent. Like, these, these players are no joke. And then yeah. Ravens defense against Giants, I think that would be a good matchup there. But then Sophia's team is pretty consistent as well josh allen dalvin cook adam thielen mm-hmm. uh, austin eckler's back hopefully he has a good game there darren waller cooper cup rams defense um yeah pretty consistent on her side so i think that'll be interesting to see i think the reason why sophia's team and brennan's teams happen so scary is because of how consistent they are and that's one of the mm-hmm. reasons why i was scared to play brennan because of tyree kill and camara yeah. They've been getting, like, 20-plus point games in every game. Mm-hmm. And if they do bad, then his entire team does bad. So it's right. kind of a double-edged sword there. Let's go into predictions for Week 16. But I just have a question. Are Is Trey and Lysia still playing? Or is- I think so. But I think it's just, like, why not? It's <laughs> yeah. just, like, might as well, you know, let them play. Let the kids play, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, let's, let's go over the predictions. If we had like a league of eight, I think it would actually matter more. Mm-hmm. But because we're only six teams, uh, you know, it's just a repeat. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Predictions. So I am one hundred forty-one to eighty-three in predictions, a sixty-three percent, and Caleb is one hundred forty-nine to seventy-five, which is sixty-six <laughs> percent. So. I'm still behind, but maybe I just go crazy this week and hope yeah. to get ahead and upsets or whatever, but we'll see. Yeah. Wait, what What was our record last week? Because we had the same record. I forgot. Um, what um, oh, yeah. 11-5. Uh, we had oh. 11 right ones and five incorrect ones. Okay. I, I forgot. Which is pretty good. Today. But, uh, yeah, Um. so we got the Viking Saints. I didn't realize it's a Christmas game. It's a Friday game. Yeah, it's the – Christmas game. There's no Thursday night game. It's just Friday. It's I, Christmas. I think this is probably the best time of the season because you got Friday games like this. You got Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, three days in a yeah. row. Yep. And you got like. And I don't, I don't think there is a Monday night game, is there? Yeah, know. there's a Monday night game. There yeah. is. Four days in a row. There you go. That's crazy. That's what I like about this season because you got Saturday or Saturday games. And I just love Saturday games so much. I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. I just love them so much. But um, because at this point, you know, the college games are not on a weekly basis; they're just bowl games. So it's not like we would 
it's not like the NFL would lose too much viewership for it. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, New New Orleans versus Minnesota. Who you got? I got the Saints. Just the you Saints. Got the Saints. Yeah, a pretty obvious reason. Saints are just a much better team. Yeah, true. I'm actually taking Minnesota. Wait, you're you're picking Minnesota? Yeah, I am. Wait, for what reason? I think Minnesota has a lot of upset potential. Um, their offense is just you know, stand out and they've played some pretty tough defenses before and still like pretty much rolled over them. Like when they played green Bay in one and mm-hmm. even their defense can stiffen up. And I feel like saints coming into this postseason are on edge because they haven't been playing with their starting quarterback and they're still working that out. And, you know, even like with Kamara hasn't been doing that well, Michael Thomas hasn't been doing that well. Uh, so they still have a lot of things to work out. I just feel like there's some upset potential here. And you know, like I said, I might, I'm, I'm kind of going crazy right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. I don't know. I just feel like the Saints are too good to lose next the Vikings. But again, they did lose to the Eagles, so you never know. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, who uh, who else has the Saints lost to anyways? It was the Chiefs? They lost to Eagles, so they've had two losses in a row actually. Wow. And then um, they lost to the Green – it was before the Green Eagles. Bay, yeah. yeah, Green Bay. And, then and Raiders. Lost. Wait, what? Who? They lost to the Raiders. They did? Week two. Oh, wow. But they won nine straight before yeah. the Eagles, which was yeah. pretty amazing. But then we got the Buccaneers-Lions. I'm going to choose the upset here. And take- <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're taking the Lions? Yeah. Dude, I'm even in Detroit, and I'm not taking the Lions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just, I just want the Lions to win. I, just I, like, I mean, I, I would love to see if somehow Buccaneers don't end up in the playoffs. <laughs> like that'd be cool to see. And I hope I'm wrong about this about choosing Buccaneers. But yeah, I'm just taking Buccaneers because I don't, I don't see the upset potential. I'm sorry. Yeah. I it's, just feel like it's too, too little, too late of effort from. It. Lions, like yeah, you know, they can keep up with the Bills up until a point, and I feel like that's just gonna be the same thing with Buccaneers. I feel like they're going to take it that I don't know. I just feel like the Bucks are bad, even though they're not nine and five. I just want them. Yeah, to- they're not a Super Bowl team. So yeah, I think that's my like upset stretch, like upset of the week, because I I've been wanting to do at least like one upset, because there's always been like a couple upsets per week the mm-hmm. past few weeks, and I feel like this is my upset. Because you like, yeah, the Steelers and whatever, but you got the 49ers Cardinals game. I had the Cardinals in this one. Who do you have? All right, hold on. I had things a bit out of order. You have the Cardinals? Yeah. Yeah, I also have the Cardinals because I really want to see Kyler Murray in the playoffs. Um, And 49ers have lost their ability to get to the playoffs. It's just not their season. Mm -hmm. I would have liked it if everyone could have gone healthy and, you know, made a last effort. To get there, but it's too late now. Yeah. Um, I want to see Arizona do it. And then we got the Dolphins Raiders to close out the Saturday mm-hmm. night games, um, or Saturday games. And yeah. I got the Dolphins beating the Raiders. As do I. I don't think Raiders have been looking that great recently. They just lost to the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, who I mean, Chargers came and close out games, and yet um, uh, Miami just looks a lot better <sighs> defense and offense. I would even say so. Agreed. Honestly, and their car might still be out, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. I honestly might put the Dolphins, keep the Dolphins defense in. I, I was I was a little hesitant because the Raiders did put up a lot of numbers against the Chargers, but the, again, that is the Chargers. Mm-hmm. But the Raiders kind of remind- I mean, they put up a lot of points against the Colts as well, by the way. Oh, that is true. But, like, they got – like, they have games like against the Falcons where they only score, like, three points as well. Yeah. And I feel like – the Dolphins can have like three turnovers against the Chiefs, so I think they can do it against the Raiders. A little stretch, but um, what I was gonna say is the Raiders kind of remind me of the Eagles, but in the A or in the AFC, or the Eagles of the AFC, because like they beat great teams. Like the Raiders beat some of the best teams in the league, like the Saints. They beat the Chiefs, but then they lose to like dumbass teams like the falcons and like these other like trashy teams um well like the colts are obviously not a trashy team but like 
But then I just the Eagles are the same way where they beat some of the like really good teams, like they beat the Saints this year or whatever, but they always end up beating like a couple really good team teams during the season, but then lose to like dumbass opponents that they shouldn't be losing to. Yeah, that'll be uh, those Saturday games will still be fun to watch though. Boxing Day. Jets versus Cleveland. Um, Jets got their win. I don't think they're going to – I mean, maybe they'll try to go for a second, but I feel like – listen, you got your win. Just try to get back into the first draft pick position. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, and Cleveland's going to – you know, they're still fighting for better seating, so they're not going to, like, let up anything. Yeah. So, Cleveland, I have them. I have the Browns, too. Uh, the Jets, it's kind of stupid that the Jets won the, yeah. the Rams because I'm pretty sure that puts Jacksonville ahead of them in the draft order. Yeah, like all Jets fans hate it, but the Jets organization, they just wanted to win. And I can understand that. Like, like if you're a very losing team, like you just want the feeling of winning again. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, Jacksonville now has control. I think it's like 65% chance they give that first draft pick and Jacksonville will play Chicago, which is pretty tough defense and team in general. And then Colts Colts will definitely not let up anything against Jacksonville since we lost that first week against them. We're going to be playing for revenge and likely still be playing for the division. So yeah. I, yeah. I, sorry. Excuse me. (laughs) It's okay. Uh, Chargers versus Denver. Uh, This is actually an interesting one. I feel like, a lot of people will look at Chargers as being the favorites just based off of Herbert's performance against yeah. Vegas and all that. But Denver is still, you know, they can they can make some moves. Definitely coin flip here. I I Both think I'm, I think I'm going to go with the Chargers on this one. Mm. Just because I'm actually going Denver. You're picking Denver. I am. Okay. Uh, but just how the Chargers play against the Raiders and how. Broncos play against um, the Bills. Just, I don't know. I just have more faith in the Chargers winning. That's fair. Um, I'm going Denver simply because I'd like to see them improve because I feel like they've kind of gone unlucky with the injuries and stuff. So, you know, to end the season, at least get to 7-9, that's like a pretty fair, like, you know, they could have been like, a playoff contender had if things you know went the right way sort of mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. yeah i just wanted to kind of see that and you know chargers they're not playing for anything anymore like they don't have much else to prove i don't think other than justin herbert's rookie of the year resume i suppose but yeah. i think he's kind of solidified that given that he's like literally broken records so <laughs> yeah chiefs 13-1 atlanta 4-10 who you got the chiefs that easy Easy. Colts 10-4, Pittsburgh 11-3. I'm picking the Colts here. I just absolutely hate the Steelers, and they've been playing like dog shit. Yeah, Colts are – they just got the mentality, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Steelers may stiffen up, and I feel like it'll be a good game. I don't think Colts will destroy them by any means, but I think Colts have just shown – that they can close things out and they've had the momentum these past couple of weeks. So I'm kind of mad low key about the Steelers because they had the opportunity of being 13 and one, the same record as the chiefs. So you would have two 13 and one teams and two one and 13 teams in the same <laughs> conference. That would have been cool. Yeah. But it could have been 16 0 and a 15 one team. That is true. But Pittsburgh had a let up so many easy games. Anyways, Washington against Carolina. Washington 6-8, Carolina 4-10. Who you got? Honestly, this is, even though Panthers are more of a 4-10 team, this is more of a coin flip in my eyes. I I more of a coin flip due to the fact that i still undecided if I want the Eagles to go into the playoffs <laughs> or not. So, like, it's more of bias than anything, I think. But I think Washington. I mean, Washington. they both have pieces, yeah. Yeah, oh, I think Washington is going to win this because I'm at the point where I want the Eagles to get a good draft pick rather than um, go into the playoffs and then lose. I actually think Carolina is going to win this. Oh, really? Dang. Yeah, um, I'm not so, like, sold on Dwayne Haskins. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Alex Smith is 
I don't know if he'll be healthy by then, but yeah, mm-hmm. it, I feel like Dwayne Haskins hasn't led the team as well as Alex Smith has. Yeah. And, you know, Antonio Gibson's may still be out. Uh, you know, defense is always super good, but um, I think Carolina can, you know, clutch it out. There's yeah. where I stand on that. Jacksonville versus Chicago. Jacksonville is 113, Chicago 7 7. Who you got? There's. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. Like, Yup. Baltimore 9 5, Giants 5 9. Who you got? I got the Ravens. Giants haven't been playing good. They've, the last two games, they've only been able to score field goals, I think. They've scored nine total points in the last two games, haven't yet scored a touchdown mm-hmm. in three games. So, as for those reasons, I think Baltimore will take this one away. Yeah. Houston 4 10, Cincinnati 3 10 and 1. Houston coming off of a rough loss to the Colts. Cincinnati coming off a win against the Steelers. Yeah. Who you got? I don't know about this one. Like, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> like if you were, like if it if it was if this was before the week of the Steelers before they won, I would have said Texans. Houston, obviously, yeah. But now I'm not sure. Maybe Cincinnati yeah. can do it even without Burrow. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I'm going to say the Bengals on this one. You are? Yeah. I, I've got Houston just because of Watson. I, I just I like Watson. Even though he's in my division, I'm supposed to hate him. Um I just feel like that guy's slippery. You know, Cincinnati can catch Ben Roethlisberger off guard, obviously. He's not going anywhere. But they're not going to be able to have that success against Deshaun Watson. He's yeah. the type of guy who's going to, you know, make those plays. So, um, Seattle versus Rams. This is a huge one. This might decide the division. Might not. But it'll definitely – huge playoff implications regardless. Um, Seattle is 10-4. Rams are 9-5. Who you got? I got the Seahawks this game. Okay. You weren't so confident about your Seahawks. How come? I don't know. Rams just had a worse loss. Yeah, that's true. On the Jets. I mean, I feel like they're both on the downtrend anyways. Yeah. I just I just feel like, I don't know. This is a coin flip, and I I think I'm solely doing this on bias because I want the Seahawks to win. But mm-hmm. I feel like Russ – I've been saying – I've been trying to back up Russell Wilson for the second half of the season, but I just don't see it. But like I, I, I don't know. I literally have no reason why I have the Seahawks over the Rams. <laughs> yeah. So my only reasoning for choosing the Rams is that it is a coin flip. I absolutely agree, and I just want things to be interesting in the <laughs> NFC West. <laughs> like yeah. just you know, just like let's make things interesting. Yeah. They'll both be ten five if Rams win, and then you know Cardinals are kind of that unknown factor. It was just it was making things interesting. Yeah. Dallas 5 9 versus Philadelphia 4 9 1. I think this is pretty clear. Eagles. And it's not like maybe it's a clear win, but more so it's a clear what our answers are going to be. We're going to cheer on the Eagles against Dallas. Yes. And uh, Jalen Hurts has been playing amazing, anyways. Yeah. So there you, you go. You may see a late second switch to Jalen Hurts instead of <laughs> Russell Wilson for me. You never know. <laughs> we'll see (laughs) um green bay versus tennessee this will be a huge sunday night game especially for me in fantasy and for the for my colts like i'm going to be definitely paying attention to this game for multiple reasons uh and for like aaron Rodgers' mvp chances this will definitely like solidify whether or not he's a contender or not so Mm -hmm. green bay is 11-3 tennessee 10-4 it's at green bay's home by the way lambeau what do you got I got the Packers. Me too. Because I'm cheering for your Colts. I want the Colts to do well. Yes. And uh, the Packers, the Packers, I just feel like, are too good of a team. Even though they struggle against the Panthers, I feel like what you said about Aaron Rodgers saying that the Panthers had unique uh, defensive plays is what tripped him up. But I just feel like Aaron Rodgers. I don't think Titans have that in their bag, you know? Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is a bad man. I feel like he's going to go <laughs> and win there. And, yeah, go and prove to 12-3. and three. Yes, I would love to see it. I'm a big fan of Aaron Rodgers. So. Yeah. And I'm not a big fan of Titans, as we all know. So. Mm-hmm. New England, 6-8. Buffalo, 11-3. New England, you know, they're a bit tricky. I'm sure they're going to want to improve to 8-8. This, they don't want a losing season. They haven't had one in so long. So, um, at least have a tie season. Uh, and Buffalo, you know, they're still playing 
proceeding and whatnot. So, uh, first time that the Patriots aren't going to be making the playoffs as well since 08. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say the Bills just because I hate the Patriots. You see, I hate both of them, mm-hmm. but I especially hate New England and Cam Newton more. So I have to go with Bills, especially because you know they're clearly the better team right now. Yeah. So there you go. We actually had so many disputes. Six, six disputes. So if you want to pull away and win, when this is the time. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Because I'm down eight. Yeah. So this would be huge. Let's see, it's Minnesota, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Detroit, Denver, Chargers, Carolina, Washington, Houston, Cincinnati, and Rams, Seattle. Yep, this is going to be another interesting week for our predictions and in fantasy as well. Indeed, indeed. All right, uh, there you go. wrap this up. and Yeah, I have to go eat. <laughs> yeah, I also have to go eat. I'm starving. Uh, so see you guys. Love you. And see you next Peace week. Peace out. Bye-bye. All right, bye.